Hello everyone, how's it going? I am still Henry, and today we're going to be talking about variable pitch propellers, also known as prop feathering, changing RPM, things like that. Alright, so we are in Flight Sim X Steam Edition today. However, this knowledge, you can use it pretty much anywhere. You can use it in The Sims, you can use it in real life, uh, War Thunder, wh whatever you're doing. But again, today we're going to be talking about that little blue lever right here that one that no one really ever uses when you're uh, just casually playing flight sim or many other programs and it's the one that it's the blue one right here that says propeller on it we're gonna dive into this mystery and a little bit more today um, but first let's describe what a variable pitch propeller does and why we have this third knob to look like a badass in the end, all right? Because again, it really is just another knob to play around with and it makes your passengers wonder, oh, what's the pilot doing? Oh my gosh, he, he knows so much. Okay, so let's dive into what exactly this little knob does. All right, so before we start, let's just uh, turn the engine off. Let's bring our mixture back and take a look at the wonderful big spinny thing called a propeller on the front of our DA40 here, all right? So this is what your uh, propeller looks like on a normal day. Right, so if you're just flying around in a Cessna, it looks like this. But if I bring this knob fully back, look at that. It changed the pitch of the propeller. And I push it forward and it goes back. So again, into the cockpit view now. This is the normal full forward on your propeller. You bring it back and look at that. It's fully feathered. Pretty pretty amazing stuff here. It's very exciting indeed. Um, so basically what this is, is that full forward prop is pretty much called low or fine pitch. All right. So basically you use it during takeoff, um, during the ground, etc. And it, it's pretty much like a normal functioning propeller. Why we have prop feathering is that we're able to change the pitch. So fine tune it to increase performance. So again, um, I'm going to bring it back a little bit here. So let's say if we're usually running 2,500 RPM, I'm going to bring it back. And around here, we would be running around 2,300 RPM, which is great for cruise. All right. So now that you can kind of see our little propeller feathering while the propeller stopped, let's take a look at it while the propeller is moving and what kind of changes the uh, RPM and all the other systems go over while we use this wonderful lever here. Let's do it. All right, so once we're uh, getting into the air here, we just took off. We have our prop full forward, all right? So we're still waiting to get to that 500 feet above ground level, and that's when we usually turn our upwind. So it's around um, past the four mark. We're just gonna wait for this. So this is 500 feet AGL, so we're gonna bring our flaps back, but also, so you can even do this while you're in the turn, you bring your feather back to around 2300 RPM there. And you can see on our RPM gauge right there that it affected that in such a way that it brought back our RPM. Okay, again, we're in a sim right now, but in real life, it takes a few moments for the RPM to actually catch up, all right? So again, I'm set to 2300 right now. 2300 RPM, you can see on the G1000 that we're looking at right now, all right? This is our normal cruise. So pretty much as soon as you uh, kind of take off, you just set it to 2300 RPM and you leave it there for the rest of the flight. You don't really change it until you come back um, on your downwind checks um, at the end of the uh, downwind. But yeah, again, we're talking about um, the propeller here, right? So. There's two things that you have to be aware of. It's overspeed and underspeed. So if you overspeed the prop, um, so basically I have full power. I'm in cruise right now. I'm at around uh, 133 knots. If I push, push it full forward again, again, I'm in the sim. I don't really care. Um, you see it redlining there, right? The governor sold the component. The governor governs the speed of the prop. So it, it keeps it from overspeeding too much. Um, with that being said, you shouldn't rely on the governor. You should actually pay attention to your prop. That's why in like a flight sim and stuff, it again, we're on the sim, but that's why it never really affects it. 
Um, so again, back to 2300 R RPM here. Again, uh, your manifold pressure is controlled by your throttle. However, it is also influenced by your RPM here. Again, another reason to have the propeller at 2300 RPM is that since we're taking a larger chunk of air, the propeller is being a lot more efficient than it would just be if it was fixed pitch, right? Another reason why uh, variable pitch propellers are very good, especially with multi-engine aircraft, is that if you lose an engine, you can just feather your propeller, right? Because a propeller that isn't feathered in flight creates more drag, so it pretty much at that time reduces your glide distance. But if you, for example, if I bring our mixture back, that so, oh no, we have an engine issue. So let's uh, pitch for 73. So as you can see, the propeller is rotating right now. And once it stops, I brought the prop back. So then it doesn't turn by itself, also known as a windmilling propeller. So unlike the situation we see with here in the sim, um, the airflow doesn't cause the propeller to turn. So therefore you create less drag, which means that you might be able to fly a little bit more of a distance. And thus concludes our little tutorial on what a variable pitch propeller is and how it functions. Yeah, I, sh I should not do voiceovers. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, thanks again for watching, guys. That's a little timbit about the variable pitch propeller. Hope it helped you understand it a little bit. I'm going to link a website that my instructor gave me in real life. Um, that really helps understand it a lot better when you're talking about, especially in regards to the DA-40 and other aircraft, the governor, overspeed, underspeed, everything else. So if you are interested in learning more about how to use our little, little derpy friend here, um, definitely look into that because it's a little feature for sure. But if you understand how to use this little knob here, it really makes your life a heck of a lot easier. So anyways, have a great day guys, stay warm as you can see it's winter out there, and again, as usual, happy landings.